<clears throat> okay, guys. So today uh, we're gonna talk. Oh no, hold on. Today we're gonna talk about electron configurations. Uh, basically, uh, this is just how electrons are arranged in an atom, and we're only gonna be talking about uh, atoms and not not about molecules. Uh, not about uh, when we when we talk about molecules, we'll talk about molecular orbitals, and we don't even talk about that. In, in this uh, course. So we're just going to be talking about electron configurations. So how electrons are arranged in atoms. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> there's really, uh, they're arranged in energy levels as Bohr had described, correct? Uh, however, it wasn't exactly how Bohr described it. Uh, more like they're in, a, they're, there's a probability of them being in a certain area. Okay, and there's a mathematical probability of them being in a certain area. Okay, uh, there's really three parts to it. So I'm going to actually go to the next slide here. Uh, there's three parts to it. The first is an energy level. So the energy levels are denoted by one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, all the way up to seven, actually. There's seven, up to seven energy levels. And then within those energy levels, there's orbitals. Okay, there's the orbitals are S, P, D, and F. Okay, so those each energy level, the first energy level only has s orbitals. The second has s and p. The third has s, p, and d. The fourth has s, p, d, and f. Okay, that's pretty much how it goes. Okay, then within those orbitals, there's suborbitals. Okay, within those orbitals, there's suborbitals. So in the s orbital, there's only one suborbital. In the P, there's three, so it's broken down into three. In D, there's five, and in F, there's seven. So actually, let me go back if we look at the picture here. So the picture here, S orbitals are like the only ones that really you can worry about the, the, the shape of it. It's a, it's a sphere. It's a sphere. Uh, there can be up to two electrons in this orbital. The P orbital there's looks something like this. We often say it looks like barbells. And there can be up to six electrons. In each because each suborbital contains two electrons and there's three of them and a D there can be up to 10 electrons and an F there can be up to 14 electrons okay and what we're going to try and just learn how to do is write these electron configurations for atoms okay so let's skip over here now writing electron configurations is pretty simple you just got to remember that it just goes linearly it, it pretty much goes you start with 1s and then 2s and 2p, then 3s and 3p. Um, it gets a little bit hazy here because now you go 4s, then 3d. Okay, it drops down here, drops down to d. Okay, uh, another way to look at it is you get a periodic table that looks like this. So electron configuration periodic table. Okay, and it makes it much easier to draw the electron, write the electron configurations when, you, when you're looking at it this way. Okay, uh, and really, the best thing to do is just start writing them, and then you got kind of see where it goes from there, and you get the hang of it. Okay, there are three rules that we need to follow. Uh, the first rule is the Aufbau principle that electrons will fill the lowest energy level first, so like they're always going to fill in the one level before they fill in the two. Um, so. The, 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 the analogy here is that the cheapest rooms go first. You're always going to sell off the cheapest rooms before you sell off the most expensive ones. So the ones with the lowest energy, they're going to fill first before the higher energy ones. Okay. The second rule is the Pauli exclu exclusion principle. If electrons fill the same uh, suborbital, so the same space, one's going to go up, one's going to go down. They're going to spin up and down, up and down. Uh, the way I explain this one, to remember this one, I had a friend Paul in college. We did a road trip after we graduated from college, and the first one of the first nights we had a hotel room. We were like, we had only we had three friends, we had two beds, so two of us had to share a bed. So my friend Paul and I were like, all right, we'll share a bed, right? And in the middle of the night, I woke up and Paul like had rolled over and hugged me in the middle of the night, thinking that yeah, I was, I guess he was sleeping, thought he was, <laughs> I was his girlfriend or something. So from then on, every time we slept, we slept head to toe. So always think head to toe, head to toe, one up, one down, one up, one down. They don't like to be that close to each other. Okay. Electrons don't like to be close to each other. They like to be as far apart as, as they possibly can. Okay. 
And then Hun's rule, Hun's rule, if in you're in, if you're putting electrons in a suborbital, you're gonna put one in each suborbital first before you put up put in two. Okay, and I'm gonna go through that as we uh, do some practice here. Okay. Uh, there are gonna be some exceptions to the rule, and we'll talk about these ex exceptions uh, once we get the hang of doing some of these. Okay, we're gonna do some practice first and then we'll, we'll we'll get the hang of it. Okay, once we get the hang of it, then we'll talk about the exceptions. So let's look at uh, something here. So magnesium, okay? So first, magnesium, uh, actually, let me, let me tell you, there's three ways to write electron configurations. There's the longhand method, which is gonna be this way with the arrows. So longhand, just remember the longhand is arrows. Uh, the shorthand, and then the abbreviated. And basically the difference between shorthand and abbreviated, abbreviated is with noble noble gas, and the shorthand is without noble gas. And, and I'll talk about what that means a little bit in a little bit after we do some of these. Okay. <clears throat> so as I was saying here, uh, the first thing we got to do is we got to look at our uh, periodic table and look at how many electrons we have. So magnesium has 12 electrons. Its atomic number is 12, so it has 12 electrons. Uh, if it's an ion, that can change the number of electrons, so just be aware of that. But we're going to keep it really simple right now. It has 12 electrons. So we're going to put these 12 electrons into these, uh, these uh, energy levels, these orbitals, and suborbitals. So the numbers represent the energy levels, the, the letters represent the orbitals, and the spaces represent the suborbitals. Okay? So uh, we have 12 electrons. So according to off-ball, we put the electrons in the lowest energy levels first. So the lowest one would be 1s. Okay? So put one in there. Okay? The next thing is uh, poly exclusion. If we're going to fill the same suborbital, they have to have opposite spins. So we're going to put it like this. So that's poly exclusion. We have to put them opposite spins. Okay? Opposite spins. Do not put them in the same orbital like this. That is incorrect. Okay? That would be violating poly exclusion principle. Okay? The next, off ball, again, fill the lowest energy level. Poly, opposite. Okay? So we have four electrons so far. Next one, uh, the Hun's rule. So 2p, we're going to put one in each before we start doubling them up. So we put one in each, and then we're going to double them up. And again, Pauli tells us that they have to be opposite. Okay, so we have two, four, six, eight, ten. And we need two more, so two more go in the 3s. Okay, so this is a longhand configuration. It's annoying, and you'll probably never have to do it on an AP exam. Most likely, you'll never have to do it on an AP exam. They may give you this uh, setup in a, in a free response, not a free response, in a multiple choice, and ask you what's wrong with it. So they might give you something that's wrong with it, like the two arrows up, up like this, or they might put, um, like, you'll, you'll see in this worksheet, there's actually a, a couple questions that ask you that, well, what's wrong with them. Okay, so next, uh, the bottom here, they want you to do the actual electron configuration. If they just ask for electron configuration, uh, in the AP, it's okay to always do the abbreviated. The electron configuration is always okay to do the abbreviated. I'm going to do the shorthand, and then I'm going to show you what the abbreviated would, would be. Okay, so the shorthand would be 1s. So how many, you do 1s, and how many electrons are there? There are two. Two electrons in the 1s. In the 2s, there's two electrons. In the 2p, there's six. In the 3s, there's two. So these uh, these exponents tell us how many electrons are in each um, orbital and energy level. Okay. Now we want to do the shorthand. So the shorthand, what we do is we look at the periodic table here, and we look at the the uh, we look at the, where Mg is, and we go backwards and look at the first noble gas. 
So the first noble gas that we come to as we go backwards is neon. So we're going to write neon. So I'm just going to write, this is like the other one is in a bracket, we write neon. So we have neon, the electron configuration for neon, plus whatever else we have. So we then we have uh, two, uh, sorry, uh, three S2. So neon, so we have the electron configuration for neon and three S2. Okay, so this is the, the shorthand. This is the abbreviated. Shorthand and abbreviated. Okay. Now, really, all these are the same, same kind of method you're going to be using. And uh, you always just refer back to, uh, let's see, if you look at this one. So if you refer back to the uh, periodic table chart here. So there we go. Give it a second. It's working. So you refer back to the chart. If you want to find the electron configuration for any specific atom, you just look at where it is in the chart here. So let's say we want to find it for rubidium, right? So rubidium. Uh, then the, the long version would be including everything that comes before it. So it'll be like, say, rubidium. Be 1s2. 2s2, 2p6, 2p6, 3s2, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, I'm just going to continue down here, 4s2, 3d10, so, so be careful here, it drops, the numbers drop one, these are all one less, and these are actually even one less than that when we get down to the Fs. Okay, so 3D10, 4P6, and then 5S1. So that would be the, the, the electron configuration. If we want to do the abbreviated, abbreviated is much, much easier. So we go backwards and we look at the, the noble gas that came before it, so krypton. So it would be KR in parentheses. And then 5s1. And 99% of the time, this one will be totally 100% acceptable and what, what they'll expect from you on the AP exam. Okay. Uh, I just want to go over that really quickly. And then in, uh, I want you to give it a shot. Try the best you can. I guarantee there's going to be some questions that you come up with. Um, and... I can go over those on Thursday. All right, so give those your best shots. See if you can get it done. Oh, and it won't let me X out of here. Hold on. Yeah, and then just give it a shot. And then if you're having any trouble or any issues, uh, let me know and we can go over some more of these problems. Okay, but that's like the basics of it the very, 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 very limited basics of it. Um, and yeah, we, we'll talk about exceptions once you get these down. Once you can do it without the exceptions, then we'll talk about the exceptions. Uh, if you look at the uh, problems, so that's the electron configuration hotel worksheet. If you look at this one that you're also going to do, these have some of the exceptions in there. So you're going to see that when you get some of your answers, they're not going to be the same as the answers here. Okay. And that's because they're exceptions to the rule. And we'll talk about those exceptions uh, on Thursday. Okay. So give it a shot and do the best you can. If you need to watch other videos, feel free to watch other videos. Otherwise, that's all I really want to say.